gamers, welcome back to the Self Made Auto Channel. Got us a 2011 V Dub CC20 Turbo. Needs rear brakes. Thought I'd bring it along. Step one find the wheel lock. 30 minutes later, get out a scan tool. And this has electronic parking brakes, so we have to put them in service mode. We're going to use one of the hot functions here on the Alto. It doesn't want to feel my fingers this morning. Uh, replace parking brake, or replace brake pads is what we want to do. So we got to put them in service mode. Um, and enable parking brake system, press OK. Make sure it's above 12 volts, and we are not. Should still work. Parking brake is not on. You can hear it kind of humming away back there. It should put them in our service mode and then we should be able to turn the key off. Some cars you gotta leave the key on the whole time, which is kind of a pain in the neck. Turn the next switch off, replace pads, turn it on, and then hit OK. Another classic feature out here. Whoa, hang on, folks, we're coming in. Alright, we got her shut down. It is turned off. Make sure the lights are off. Here we go. Alright. Should be good now. We reach back on the back side of this caliper and just unplug. Whoa, hang on fellas. I know you probably can't see, but it's kind of cramped back here. There's the electrical connector on the back of the caliper. Those two words should never go hand in hand. We unplug the electrical caliper. So there's the connector. I don't know if you can see it. it has a little tab. A kind of a pain release. I find if I just go into the front side of them, just pick up on that tab with the pick, I find I break less of them doing them that way. And I do not know personally if there is a workaround, you know, like for the for the home gamer, you know, the DIY want to just change your brakes at home type thing, which I think is totally feasible. But the fact you need thousand dollar scan tool to put it in service mode I think it's kind of unfeasible I have no idea what a dealer charges for for brake service I mean here we just you know we get an hour flat rate I don't charge any magical fee because it has an electric you know parking brake but I know some guys really get off on that stuff. If they've got a tool to do something and somebody else doesn't, man, they just go bananas. But I think that, you know, the average, uh, you know, DIYer, you know, they like to do their own oil changes, their own brakes, some of their own suspension work, you know, stuff that's well within their abilities. And then, you know, you get stuff like this, man, this car is about seven years old suck to have to take it to the dealer or take it to you know shop every time you you know needed brakes if you were a kind of guy that liked to do your own do your own work you know but I think and I'm not hundred percent certain that the Altel I think the 808 it is the I don't know if it's MS 808 I believe that has the ability to do this and that is more of what I would consider an affordable DIY tool I think that's in the $450 to $500 range, quite a capable tool for what it is. I think it lacks some of the bi-directional functions of like the 906 that we're using or the 908 that I use, uh, but I believe it has a lot of the service functions, uh, you know, battery insulation resets and stuff like on the Euro cars, these, you know, this brake pad service business, uh, stuff like that, and I think that's the advantage of that tool. All right, let me get a piston wind back tool. Oh, yeah, effing kidding me. Stupid freaking Volkswagens. I got the Mac Daddy piston wind back tool, but leave it up to Volkswagen to use some oddball freaking three prong donger on there. And I don't have it. Got a $1,000 skin tool to turn the pistons off. But... All right, plan B. All right. So maybe they put three dongers on there so people are like, hey, I ain't got the tool, maybe I should go read. Apparently, once it's in service mode, you can gingerly push it back. Got a little all, got all worked up over nothing. Sometimes you gotta slow down and go fast, fella. Let's push them and get a little wire brush clean off some of the crud here. 
Sheesh, good thing we read. shape actually no rust on them fancy so we're gonna set that up here where technically it shouldn't fall down far anyways set the little hole down out of there probably triple squares holding that little fell on and it is and I've got an M14 now there's a speed sensor up there that's pretty close to it so don't don't let your wrench slip or your socket. Come on, snap that little guy off. Drag triple squares. Now we will use the mysterious red ratchet with the DeWalt battery on it. Begs lots of questions, so I'll answer them now. This is made for Mac tools by some company that also uses the DeWalt battery but it is not made by DeWalt. You can do a little Googling. Oh, I she ain't got enough lead in the pencil for that one. aren't that old. I put these on uh, probably six months or so ago. And all I remember is finding out that bolt that holds this little guy on is around three million foot-pounds of torque. I remember to be able to achieve the torque spec in which that was held on with the new torque yield. I needed an eight-foot bar and that's no joke. I got an eight-foot piece of two-inch square tubing. It is insanely tight. Uh, let's see, I guess we can open up our new rotors. Got some from the nap. Oh, where's my knife? My knife is MIA. Oh man, part of my everyday carry. Now I feel naked. Oh, I hope these are right. I'm gonna find out. In the momento. Look at that. Beautiful. What's up, Mrs. O? Coming out here to get me sick with your sickness? Get me down with the sickness. You know that song? Yeah. So I'll put that on. I've taken our caliper bracket and already cleaned it up. These were quite clean. I just had to barely touch them with a flat file or a little square file, a wire brush, and they're good to go. So we'll get a little loop on them. Got some Napa Ultra Premium. I'm missing my knife. I feel naked. I'm almost like over here with my pants off, basically, is how I feel. <sighs> Hardware. And they look right. I think we're good. We're in good shape for the shape we're in. You just come out here to bug me? What? You should tell the people we're sick. You're sick. I'm sick. Listen to me. I'm sick. I can and, and Eric asked me, I've had a cold for three days. Last night he said, Do you still have your cold? Yeah. Well, of course I asked you <laughs> if you have a cold. Like sometimes I get a cold, like boom, 12 Listen hours to like me. boom. What do I sound like? mess over here. Let's put a little bit of lube behind our hardware, as it is our habit to do, to prevent rust buildup. Now the hardware is stainless steel. It does not necessarily need to be lubed, but this is always the, the pinch point here. This gets rusty, this squeezes the hardware, hardware squeezes the pads, and then naturally the pads seize in their brackets. 
install the new hardware. Always install new hardware. Get that clipped on there. Get that one clipped on there. And then we'll go install our new pads, which should move freely. Once installed, easily move back and forth. Should never have to grind or custom fit them. Stick our outer pad in. Now these pads were the same inside to outside. And that one moves nice and free. We'll double check our guide pins here. They appear to be lubricated just fine. You don't ever want to overdo them. Those are good. Move nice and free. We'll stick her back up on the car. These are the bolts hold on, like I said, that's the triple square. Give it the classic reach around if we can. Don't have to go look. There we go. Get these bolts started, get both of them in, torque them to factory specs. So prevent it from rusting in the future. A little bit of grease on inside of the caliper ears. You don't have to go hog wild and then we do the face of the piston to keep it from getting crusty. Did you water your mums? Mm -hmm. I see they were looking a little bum. Yeah, yeah you see what I did there? Yeah. Very clever. Pretty clever. You know your lamb's tongue at home? See that's looking a little sheepish. Huh? Nothing? My lamb's tongue? Yeah. Lamb's ear, lamb's tongue. It's an ear. It's an ear, it's a tongue. I don't know, I guess tongues really aren't fuzzy, are they? Just trying to crack a joke with you, Mrs. O. You don't have to get nasty with me. I was thinking of starting you to go fund me because you're sick, but I don't know now. I was going to have Sarah McLaughlin come down. Do you remember me? You know, it's only $2 a day. You can sponsor Mrs. O and her sickness. Uh huh. No, no days off. And that's pretty well that. Make sure your caliper slides back and forth. Don't forget to plug it back in. Get the tire back up on here. A little bit of a balancing act. And once you get one stud in, it's not too bad. We'll get the rest of these in. We'll go down and torque these down. Back to specs. Which I think, I'm going to have to look, it's like 88 foot pounds or something on these. I know I don't have a torque, st torque stick for them in the 17 millimeter. So we'll do it by hand. Key back on now. Pick up where we left off. It is exiting service position, so it should be making a bunch of racket and stuff here shortly, I'm assuming. Battery voltage getting down pretty low. So you can hear it back there making some noise, so it's gonna go through a little process. Park and brake light over here is flashing. Apply the parking brake, which I did. Rear brake pad replacement complete. I'm going to turn the parking brake back off, which I think you got to hold your foot on the brake. I'm just going to pump up the brakes. They feel good. Hopefully the car battery's not too dead. Woo! Barely. Brake pedal feels nice. Now we'll take her for a little toot around town. See how it feels. Make sure the parking brake works. We'll roll backwards here, hit the button. Whoa, she grabs. <laughs> and releases. All right, I'm running out. Double check the brake fluid. I'll we'll go for a shimmy. Where's my seatbelt? I think this thing got a lot of mile on there. 100 and 
177K it says. Wow. Yeah, here we go. It's turbo time. Folks, rear brake pads and rotors on the back of your Volkswagen CC. And I guess this begs the question, does this type of brake service really take the DIYer out of the game unless they're willing to spend, uh, you know, I mean, in this case, uh, these 906s are about $1,200, but like I said, I think the 808 is the other scan tool they make that's about the $500 range. Is there a workaround for it? I really don't know. Uh, simply because I have uh, the tools to do it, I've never really looked into that. If you know that answer, uh, and it's something that's you know reliable without you know obvious risk of damaging you know either the car or you know the caliper put that in the comment box below uh, share that with other folks so perhaps if they have this car or a car similar to it they can do their own uh, brake service which you know used to be a pretty average easy task for most any DIYer uh, and I believe it still can be but unfortunately I think some of it might begin a little bit more on the expensive side where you know perhaps it's a better option to take it to a shop and have it done uh, than invest in the tools. Um, leave your questions, comments, criticisms in the comment box below. While you're down there, click subscribe, ring the bell, all that business, find us around. And just remember viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.